I'll send a note in the chat box uh, to David Burns. Um, I'm Lori Lightfoot, I'm the mayor of Chicago and honored to serve as the chair of this committee. And let me begin by recognizing vice chairs uh, who are with us. Uh, Bridgeport Mayor Joe uh, Gannam, vice chair for reentry. Um, Joe, welcome. Uh, El Paso you. Mayor, um, El Paso Mayor D. Margo, vice chair for border policy. Good to see you, Mayor Margo. Uh, Philadelphia Mayor Jim Kenney, uh, also vice chair. Phoenix Mayor Kate uh, Galago, Vice Chair for Community Policing, and Des Moines Mayor of Frank County, Vice Chair for Emergency Management. Thank you all for being here, Mayors. Um, in any year, the business of this committee gets at the core function of our role as mayors, uh, the safety of our residents and building equitable, thriving communities. Uh, and as we all know, this isn't just any, any year. As mayors, we have been at the center uh, probably one of the biggest challenges that we have faced, not only as mayors and as communities, um, but as a global community. This year has been an incredible roller coaster of highs and lows, challenges, but also opportunities. This meeting will take on important resolutions that were put forward in response to COVID-19 submitted prior to May 17. Since that date, the world has changed again and our communities have changed. In the aftermath of the murder of George Floyd on May 25th, at all levels of government, our country is undergoing important conversations about the role of policing and racial justice. And we are committed to this cause at the US Conference of Mayors in this committee and in a working group on police reform and racial justice uh, that we'll present today. I look forward to a robust discussion uh, this afternoon, resolving into a meaningful action in the days and weeks and months to come. Our communities must be heard, and we have a responsibility and a duty to represent uh, their voices now more than ever. As we look forward, our country is at a critical junction, and the role that we as mayors play, I believe, is paramount to earn and renew the trust and faith of the people that we serve, and I think our voices as mayors are critically important in this moment, uh, probably more so um, than ever. But certainly we are on the front lines. We are responsible for responding to the needs of our constituents, both their aspirations or heartache. We are the ones who are charged with making sure that we are responsive. There is no can to kick down the road uh, for us. At this point, um, I'd love to turn it over uh, to my friend, um, and our conference president, Brian Barnett, um, who is with us here today. And Mayor Barnett, please um, do share with us um, some thoughts for the group. Well, on behalf of uh, Mayor Bulwage and myself, I wanna thank you for uh, uh, a few minutes to, to just say hi and greet this group. This is, uh, I think, the eighth uh, Zoom meeting we've had with our, our, uh, our team and, and our, our committees and Mayor Light, but thank you for your leadership. Um, I want to specifically thank you and, and two other member mayors that I'll mention in just a moment. But uh, we know uh, about your community. The city of Chicago is a, a brilliant light across our nation. And uh, I know the demands that you must have on your time and the way that you have committed yourself, your talents, your team, and your resources to this conference is certainly admirable. And uh, I want to make sure that I do everything I can to support you now and, and into the future. So thank you for for your leadership. Uh, so many great and familiar faces on this call. You have, as I can see in this call, you have uh, almost the entire senior leadership team of uh, past president, uh, Mayor Benjamin, uh, future president, uh, Greg Fisher and Nan Whaley, um, and really a lot of the leadership. Um, just wanna thank all of you for your continued support of this organization. During times like this, you have to find ways to reinvent yourself to remain relevant and uh, a meeting like this to uh, to make sure that important resolutions are considered, uh, that uh, we're continuing to see each other's faces, share ideas, uh, is really an important part of making this organization uh, thrive and continue to uh, be something that people value moving forward. You know, we're very blessed uh, to have incredible steady leadership, uh, and I'll never tire of recognizing and, and thanking Tom Cochran for his leadership team or his leadership personally and the team that he's assembled and in this particular time 
uh, we get to thank someone like Laura Waxman, who is uh, a quiet but steady, uh, trusted voice in Washington uh, on all matters related to, uh, to policing and, and social justice. And I've sent so many questions to her from other mayors and just appreciate you, Laura, your hard work, your attentiveness to mayors and uh, the passion you have on this, this topic and so many others. We're, we're blessed to really have you as part of our team. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor Burnett. About three weeks ago, um, and I should tell you too that, uh, and, and Mayor Bulwich can vouch for this, in just about every chance and every and several other, Mayor Norton as well, uh, in just about every other committee meeting that I've spoken, I have talked about the meeting of this group today and directed folks to attend. I can see our participant number is about 120 right now, which is about five times more than most of the other committees. Uh, and so maybe folks are tuning in because of the work that this committee is doing and the presentation and report that will come out of this committee in just a few moments. Uh, so we've been bragging about the importance of your work to every other committee that's met before you. And that work um, is really critical. And uh, as I was starting to say about three and a half weeks ago, um, as I was sitting with, with uh, Tom uh, Cochran and, and trying to understand how we could support mayors and specifically support them during these times of social unrest when it was just seemingly uh, you know, coming apart at the seams, uh, mayors do what we always do, uh, which is come together, find tangible solutions and lead. And while Washington and governors and so many other talking heads were pointing figures, fingers, um, we put a committee together led by Mayor Lightfoot, Mayor Castor and Mayor Cranley. I see all three of you on the screen today. Thank you. I have no idea how you found time uh, in the last month with all the other things going on to, to devote to the product that you'll present today but the six principles that you put forward and that all of you will see shortly or maybe have seen recently are thoughtful, they're profound, they're contemporary, and they're actionable. Uh, this is real things, a real roadmap that every community on this screen and paying attention at home uh, can apply uh, in their community. So to Jane, to John, and to Lori, thank you for going above and beyond your traditional roles uh, and, uh, and giving us some time and talent uh, to uh, produce something that really the country is looking forward to. We're gonna have a lot of media about the release uh, of the working group on police reform and social and racial justice uh, in just a few moments. Finally, uh, let me just end by my per with my personal thanks to all of you. Appreciate, uh, as was mentioned in just about every intro, uh, this wasn't necessarily the race that we all signed up for, uh, but it's the race that we're in. And I wouldn't choose to be uh, with any other group of people uh, than the mayors on this screen and the mayors that are part of this organization. Thank you for the incredible support, the texts, the, uh, uh, the comments, the emails, the calls, all wonderfully appreciated. There was a time there that I was talking to about 20 mayors a day, uh, every day uh, of the week. Uh, and that familial relationship is something that I think is intangible uh, and something that makes this or such a great organization. So um, sincerely, thank you for your support. Thank you for your leadership. Look forward to the conversation that will occur, the resolutions you will consider. Uh, June 30th, next Tuesday, uh, the executive committee will meet to uh, consider these resolutions and the, uh, the recommendations of the nominating committee. And then on July 1st, just mark your calendars. I know Greg and I already have. Uh, we'll be giving two speeches, one on my year uh, wrapping up and uh, Mayor Fisher then will, uh, will give us a, a sneak peek and highlight and launch us into uh, what uh, he hopes to be and we know will be an amazing year of leadership with Greg and Nan. So uh, that'll be noon Eastern time on Wednesday, Jan uh, July 1st. Hopefully we'll see you all there. Thank you, Mayor Lightfoot, for your leadership. Thank you for a few moments and thank you all for your friendship. Uh, thank you, Mayor Barnett, uh, for being with us today and for your outstanding service and leadership at the conference um, during uh, this very interesting year, which I think um, definitely wasn't exactly what any of us anticipated, but as you said, we play the cards that we dealt um, and we make sure that we lead on behalf of our residents. Uh, I personally uh, want to say thank you uh, for your friendship and support. Literally from uh, the first day that I was sworn in, uh, you were there. Um, I very much appreciate all the counsel and support that you've given me and giving me this opportunity uh, to work on, I think, one of the most important issues um, of the day. Uh, we are fortunate to have also our incoming uh, president, uh, Greg Fisher, our great mayor of Louisville, 
and I would invite him to uh, say a few words to this group as well. Mayor Fisher. Thank you, Thank you Mayor. Uh, again, my, my thanks to Brian Barnett for a great job uh, handled this past year with tremendous uh, dexterity and flexibility. So Brian, you're an amazing president. Thank you very much for all of your good work. Uh, and I also wanna recognize Chuck Ramsey on this. Uh, Chief Ramsey has been uh, a great counselor to so many of us. So Chief, you've managed somehow to fit us all in. We appreciate you stepping up each and every time. And I just wanted to thank the committee here as I go into my year next year, I'll be focusing on, on a couple of different things that are topical to this moment, but amongst them are dismantling systemic racism, eliminating poverty, and then police reform. So I'm really looking forward to your all's results here today and plan on integrating that obviously into the good work of the conference this next year. So Mayor Lightfoot and Mayor Castor and Mayor Cranley, thank you guys very much for the time and attention that you put into this. Thank you. Um, I'd now like to introduce the conference's newly created working group on police reform uh, and racial justice. Uh, the working group was created, as we've said, to come up with a series of recommendations for reform um, that the conference can advance to address uh, police reform and accountability measures, as well as to address um, the ongoing challenge and problem of patterns of racial discrimination in our communities and beyond. The working group is composed of myself and our great mayors from Tampa, um, Jane Castor in Cincinnati, John Cramley, as well as police chiefs of Baltimore, Phoenix, and Columbia, South Carolina. That is Commissioner uh, Michael Harrison, um, Chief Skip Holbrook, and Chief Jerry Williams. Uh, also, uh, we would not have been able to um, perform the work that we have in this short period of time without great supports from uh, many people, including uh, Chuck Ramsey, who I still claim is my homie, um, uh, but we know him obviously as really the U.S. Um, model of what a police chief is all about, uh, having served um, years in the Chicago Police Department, but been a chief in Washington, D.C., uh, Philadelphia, and co-chaired President Obama's task force on 21st century policing. Thank you, Chuck. Um, also, Ron Davis, who also uh, needs no introduction, uh, the former director of the COPS office and executive director of uh, President Obama's 21st century uh, policing, who has helped stand up and support so many police departments across the country um, during his time in government um, and since. And of course, um, Tom Cochran, uh, the CEO and executive director of the U.S. Conference of Mayors um, and the conference um, staff. Uh, Mayor Barnett asked us to serve as members of the working group. Um, and what he saw, I think, immediately, as did uh, the executive committee, that the mayors needed to stand up and be a part of this important narrative around uh, policing um, in our country. We have worked diligently with the support of others who I will recognize um, to create a roadmap for communities uh, to implement transparent and actionable reforms, which we can hold ourselves to and be accountable to our residents. As mayors and police chiefs, we are on the front lines with our communities on this issue. And we do have a wealth of experience to add to the discussion on what reform should look like and some of the root causes of some of the challenges that we're facing um, in our communities and what the positive solution um, should be. As mayors and police chiefs, um, our working group held its first meeting just a couple weeks ago. And since then it's developed a statement of principles uh, which you have before you and which will guide our work going forward. These principles uh, are rooted in the goal of advancing police practices that respect and protect the sanctity of human life and ensure the safety uh, for all. I also want to acknowledge um, to Laura Ma Waxman, uh, the Director of Public Safety for the conference. Uh, Laura has been a tireless um, champion and worker in support and I really appreciate um, her contributions. I also want to as well recognize um, Jamie Gorelick and her colleagues at Wimmer Hale. Um, they stood up, uh, raised their hand and said, call on me, how can we help? And they have provided important support and guidance uh, of the working group and their contributions are very much reflected uh, in the draft that is before you. These, over the coming months, um, our working group will put forth a, a full set of recommendations that can be implemented nationwide and that will reassure our communities that there is a concrete path uh, for the future. I'd now like to invite 
uh, members of the working group on police reform and racial justice to give a few remarks about what has been occurring in their communities in a wake of the recent police misconduct and violence and what they believe are the critical priorities uh, that we need to address um, going forward. Let me start with the mayors um, and I will call on, on Mayor Castor uh, of Tampa. Mayor. Thank you, Lori. And, and uh, thank you very much, President Barnett for allowing me to participate in this group. And before I make just a few very brief comments, I want to point out that uh, Mayor Lori Lightfoot has done the lion's share of, of this work and it, it really is uh, uh, brilliant work and something that we can all put into action in our community. So I thank you very much. I thank everyone else as well, the, um, from the law enforcement side and uh, from the conference of mayors. Having been in law enforcement for 31 years, uh, at the beginning of, of the, um, the statement here is the uh, Pelian principles which we look at in law enforcement as sort of the, the uh, basis for modern policing. And that was back in the 1800s. And if you read through those, they apply today. So a lot of the answers for police that we have had in place for uh, some time, but uh, just the difficulty in implementing those on a uh, continuous and a wide uh, basis. So first and foremost, the redefining the role of local police and public safety is critically important. And we're gonna have to do that on a national level. And then the trust and legitimacy. Officers have no power in their community unless there is trust on the, uh, the basis of the, the residents that they serve. The equality, due process, transparency, accountability, are all credit, uh, critically important. But I think you know, we have to go back to the sanctity of life and then looking at who we are serving in public safety, and that is our community. And so I am very, very proud of this set of principles. I believe that it, it's a guide for each and every mayor and each and every police chief in the United States. So I thank you, uh, Mayor Lightfoot, Mayor Cranley, um, Skip, Jerry, Mike, and uh, Chuck as always. We, in law enforcement, I don't wanna embarrass Chuck, but we always refer to Chuck Ramsey as uh, the God of law enforcement. But uh, again, very proud to have been a small part of this. And I'm looking forward to moving into the implementation of this, not only in my community, but nationwide. So thank you all. Uh, thank you, Mayor Castor. Uh, now I'd like to uh, call on uh, Mayor Cranley of Cincinnati. Mayor? Thank you, Mayor. Um, first, I want to reiterate what Mayor Castor just said. Uh, it's been an honor and a privilege to be involved, and I have been uh, incredibly uh, impressed by you, Mayor Lightfoot, and your uh, ability to articulate and write up, I think, what can be known as a new compact uh, to an updated version that doesn't replace or repudiate the Peel principles, but really bring them into our time period and deal with the injustices that have become all too apparent. Um, specifically, we will and are getting into real issues, use of force changes, banning chokeholds, not shooting at music, move, moving vehicles. Secondly, uh, real issues of transparency and accountability, uh, oversight, body-worn cameras, uh, citizen complaint authorities that have real teeth. And three, moving the paradigm towards community policing uh, and reducing crime. And I think it's important that we emphasize that the police are about preventing crime and disorder, that, that first peel principle, in a way that maintains legitimacy with a community, but is effective and reduces crime. Uh, in Cincinnati, we reduced arrests by 50%, but we also reduced uh, part one crimes by 50% since we implemented our reforms on these uh, basic three principles. And the statement as, as written up by uh, Lori and adopted by our committee, uh, I think very eloquently states all of those three uh, ideas that I, I come from Cincinnati with, and it's even better uh, explanation of what we're trying to accomplish. Thank you, Mayor. And now I'd like to turn to um, our chiefs that are part of the working group. Um, I believe firmly 
that one of the most important relationships that any mayor has uh, was with their chief of police. Public safety is one of the core responsibilities um, that every mayor has. That can't get done without a host of partners uh, beginning uh, with police chiefs. And it's been my great honor uh, to work with these extraordinary leaders who bring a wealth of experience, uh, not only to this working group, but really uh, to their communities and to our country. So let me call upon first uh, Commissioner Harrison of Baltimore. Commissioner. Uh, good afternoon, and, and thank you, Mayor Lightfoot, and thank you all for, for your leadership. Uh, you know, it's already been stated, I am certainly honored uh, and privileged to work with this working group just to give some insight to what we're doing, not just here in Baltimore, but in the policing profession. Uh, certainly, you know, most people are aware of the country's most expansive consent decree, and uh, I'm honored to be able to offer some insight into what is working and what we're compelled to do by a consent decree that now the country is demanding everybody do. Uh, and so it's, it's just been an honor to be able to help just in part, just a little bit to, to help with this initiative so that the country uh, and even the world will see what are the guiding principles and where we want policing to go. And this group uh, has been charged with putting that together. I've been honored to be a part of it. Thank you for allowing me to, to do that. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, now I'd like to call upon Chief Holbrook of Columbia, South Carolina. Chief. Thank you, Mayor Lightfoot, uh, President Barnett. Thank you. It, um, I, I share those sentiments as my colleagues. This is um, an absolute honor and a privilege to um, be part of this distinguished group to um, create this defining document. Um, you know, Commissioner Harrison said it best, I think, in our very first meeting when he said, you know, changing policy is the easy part. Um, changing a culture is what's difficult. And, and I think that is really what we're tasked with doing. And I think we have um, brought true grounded principles to, to um, you know, back to the forefront um, and created, you know, a broad, a broad focus on those six principles kind of um, um, reestablished or restated. Um, and I think it, it, it um, will help you know, guide culture, the expectations of law enforcement for the future, all while we build trust and, and legitimacy. And, um, you know, many departments um, are already forward leaning, uh, very innovative and, and have embraced 21st century policing, which I think we've all agreed was, you know, one of the probably the most defining documents in, in our careers thus far. And I hope we contribute um, even greater um, to that momentum already. Um, I think this document is an opportunity for us to create that, that rising tide to, to, to will raise all ships, which would be the 18,000 police departments um, across this country and uh, create true actionable items that um, you can, you can reach, each city can reach up um, and champion and uh, put into play. And um, I, I also thank you, Mayor Lightfoot, for pointing out that that relationship between the police chief and and the mayor, I think, is absolutely critical to um, not not only um, strong public safety in a community, but um, you, you know how we create that culture and and um, explain that culture to the citizens that we serve. So this has been a great experience for me, and I, I look forward to what the future um, has for us and what we can do to contribute to this conference of mayors and, uh, and to police reform. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Um, and now, last but not least, batting cleanup, uh, Chief uh, Williams of Phoenix. Uh, Mayor and everyone, thank you very much for the opportunity. It's been stated that it's an honor. Um, it's been an honor and an opportunity. So where there is adversity, there is always an opportunity for positive change. What I see among this group is a willingness to take some weekends and nights to really work through the process of really getting the world to buy into the fact that we're serious about this. And we're not serious in words, but we're serious in thoughts and actions. So blessed and fortunate, looking forward to what the next six months will bring. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you, thank you and thanks to Chief. And, and I'd be remiss, of course, if I didn't call upon uh, Chuck Ramsey to also offer uh, a few words. Um, Chuck, I think you have a, a unique perspective um, on policing across the country. Um, and I, I know the mayors would uh, be grateful for any uh, thoughts or suggestions that you have. 
Well, thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, these are trying times for us, but uh, there's also a time of tremendous opportunity that presents us. Um, you know, um, it's policing, I, I've been involved in policing for five decades and I've seen a lot of change, but this is the first time I've seen it, what looks like the entire country almost galvanized to take a serious look at policing, the role of police in our society. You know, sometimes you find the answer by looking back. Earlier it was mentioned, and I believe it was Mayor Castor that mentioned Sir Robert Peel back in 1829, 190 some odd years ago when he formed the London Metropolitan Police, started off with a set of guiding principles. And those principles form the, the, the foundation for building police service in that city. It's time for us to get back to basics as well. And I think these guiding principles, although you know, we, we did, we reviewed uh, Sir Robert Peel's principles because they're still valid today, but we did update them uh, to make them relevant to today's uh, challenges. But going back to basics, remembering what policing is all about, why even we became police officers to begin with, I think is the way you start by building the kind of, of departments that people around the, around the country, no matter the city, uh, have trust, have faith. I think in a lot of ways in policing, we kind of lost our way. Uh, we focus so much on reducing crime and, and, and disorder in our communities, and that's a good thing. But policing is far more than that. We've also taken on a lot of responsibilities that maybe we weren't the right fit to be the lead on. We have a role, but we need to, to define that role and we need to work with others who are better suited to be the lead in that role. I think with these guiding principles, we'll be able to create something very, very special. Policing is done at the local level, um, the majority of policing anyway. The, the, we're not gonna find a solution at the federal level. It's the mayors, it's the governors, it's those people who really understand the needs of community that will get this done. And so I'm honored to be a part of it, to work with police chiefs that I've come to know and have a great deal of respect for, as well as all the mayors that I've come to know over the past few years that I've had the honor of working with all of you. So thank you very much. And uh, I look forward to the work that lies ahead. Uh, thank you, thank you, Chuck. And now I'd like to um, throw the discussion open to any of the other mayors um, who would like to speak. Please uh, use your raise your hand function um, and Laura will um, call on you uh, in turn. Or just raise your hand. We can do that as well. We have uh, Mayor, Mayor Bullage. Bullage. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Chief. Chief, I have a question. In New Jersey and maybe throughout some of the other states, there's a move to release disciplinary records going back 10, 20, and 25 years. I'm not so sure that disciplinary records for not wearing your cap or not being in full uniform is essential to this public discourse. I do believe that racial sensitivity or even stronger violence or police officers acting out that transfer from department to department should be a public record. But I wanted to hear your thoughts on just a blanket release of anyone who was suspended for say five days or more uh, in the course of the over the last 20 years. Chief Ranzi, I, I- Which, oh, was that directed to me? I'm sorry. I, I, well, anybody can, I mean, there's a couple of chiefs on the phone. I, I'm just curious to get another state's perspective if anyone would choose to answer it. I said chief because it's, it's like saying mayor on this call. <laughs> <laughs> aside, aside, aside from collective, aside from collective. Yeah, she had a, 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 a Sorry, so, so this I'm is uh, the Arizona perspective. Um, I'm probably telling more than I'm supposed to, but if you look at Jerry Williams' record 25 years ago, the 30 years that I was a police officer, you'll see a suspension on my record. And does that mean that I can't be a police chief? Obviously, it does not mean that. I think we need to be thoughtful in what we release and cognizant of the fact that people can change and can learn and can grow. To your point, 
I do believe if it was something that was racially motivated, if it's a in custody death or use of force that was out of policy, we might want to consider that. Uh, here in Arizona, we have memorandums of understandings and state law that would prohibit you going back any place longer than three to five years. So I think it's it's important for us to talk about it in context with the chiefs across the country. We've talked about suspensions and terminations that are significant. People should know about termination and suspension, even if civil service boards have returned the employees back to our department. So that would be my thoughts, sir. Mayor Patterson Howard, you have a question? Oh, you're, you're muted. Yes. Um, no. So here in New York, I'm in Mount Vernon, New York, right outside of New York City, four square miles, 100,000 residents, big gang and um, violence and drug problem here. And New York is just undergoing probably some of the greatest sweeping police reform bills in the past 10 days where policing has changed. Uh, and we are retooling our department to respond and really would like to know, we are creating a deputy commissioner's position around um, racial equity and reform. And if there's anyone on this call in any community that has any models um, where that has been used, I would love to have that information shared. Uh, this person will be dealing with prevention, intervention and restoration mental health and homeless services, and of course, um, equity and, and some retraining. So we are committed to making major changes and transformations and would love uh, if anyone is doing anything similar to please share it. Yeah, Mayor, Mayor Patterson, this is Mike Harrison in Baltimore. I have a deputy commissioner of compliance who takes care of all compliance inspections uh, and everything dealing with our consent decree because we were under a consent decree. He was also my Deputy Chief of Compliance in New Orleans when I was the Chief in New Orleans and moved to Baltimore. Both of those bureaus are, are basically set up the same to handle all compliance and equity issues, not discipline, but all of the things you mentioned, plus any inspections or auditing capacity within the organization to uh, th that auditing to bring about accountability and transparency. I can certainly uh, put you in touch with him or have him reach out to your office to give you the design of our compliance bureau, which is, which was built out of the New Orleans Police Department model. And we built it here in Baltimore as well. That's pretty easy to do, but we can get that to you. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? Mm. Mayor Castor? Sorry, um, I have a comment, just or an observation. Uh, one of the things that we talked about as a group, and and anybody who's been involved in law enforcement knows that this is an issue nationwide, is the overarching need for national standards. Uh, you know, a police officer does. It, it, police officers are judged as a group, and so somebody does something in another state, every officer in the nation is blamed for that. Um, you know, the murder, for example. And so that's something that I advocate for. We won't be able to get out from under this turmoil every time something like this occurs unless we have some type of national standards that uh, hold all law enforcement officers accountable uh, to at least a certain standard. Just a, a quick example would be the carotid restraint. We, we discontinued that over three decades ago in our department and to find out that it's still a, a tactic that is taught and used across the nation is something that I was completely unaware of. So I am a huge advocate for some national standards. That's all. Thank you, Mayor Castor. Any other questions or comments? Mayor Craig. Mayor Lipa. Um, yes, Mayor Craig. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> we have, uh, for a number of years, uh, been following under the CALEA standards. Uh, I, I believe back in uh, 2009, we initiated that. Uh, we've held those to a high level. Um, and so a lot of what we're dealing with today, we've had uh, those certification standards reviewed every three years. We have an extra staff person uh, that provides that oversight to make sure uh, we are within uh, the tolerances, but as we exceed 
uh, multiple times on that. So I'd like to make a pitch that I think nationally we do have some standards in place that could be reviewed. Um, and I think they're uh, appropriate. The, uh, from a few years ago, uh, I had the opportunity meeting with uh, Chief Ramsey and talking about the 21st century policing in one of our meetings in DC. And uh, we, we continue to uh, implement that. So um, I think there's some things going on that are uh, exceptional and uh, hopefully those are on the table. Thank you. What I can tell you, uh, Mayor, is that um, both because of uh, necessity, um, but also because there is a wealth of uh, information that is out there, we didn't start with a blank piece of paper on any of these issues. We started first by looking at 21st century policing, then by looking at prior work um, of uh, the uh, uh, conference and then other materials uh, that members contributed to. Um, but yes, I agree with you. And I think we all recognize this isn't about starting something brand new from the whole cloth. It's looking at best practices across the country and really getting the input uh, and feedback um, from our colleagues across the country so that we can um, have a, a set of standards that then can be adapted um, to uh, the particular uniqueness of each community. But we do think that it's important for this conference um, to set the standard uh, for mayors and police chiefs across the country. And again, there's been a lot, a lot of undue praise given to me. Uh, this document was really, um, I think, a result of um, very uh, lengthy and, and robust discussions amongst the working group members. Again, I'm gonna commend Laura Waxman and Jamie Gorelick and her team at Wilmer. Um, you know, I'm a lawyer and you can't let, let a lawyer see a document without making some edits. So I did certainly uh, add my thought and voice to it, but really this was um, a, a significant group effort and I'm proud of the, the document that we put before this body for uh, consideration. Um, I'm gonna uh, ask last call if there are any other questions or comments uh, from anybody else who's on uh, the line that would like to, uh, to weigh in. Otherwise we'll move to um, other committee business. Just so you know, we'll come back at the end of the resolutions that were submitted uh, by the May 17th deadline. Um, and then we'll consider a resolution uh, related to this working group. Any other thoughts or comments uh, regarding the work of the group? All right, I'll take your silence as, as consent. Um, before we move into consideration of resolutions, um, let me ask David Burns uh, with the conference staff to provide us with a few Zoom etiquette um, uh, comments um, for the resolutions process. Uh, David? Yeah, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, I think many of you and I have been Zooming all week long, so I'll try to keep this as short as possible. Um, basically, to, to try to make this as smooth of a process as possible, we just ask that uh, you keep yourselves on mute until uh, you're actually ready to deliver some comments. Um, and most importantly, when the mayor is going to call for voting, um, when she calls for yays and nays, uh, just respond with a simple visible uh, raise hand for a yay. Um, and then when she calls for a nay, do the same. Um, it'll be very easy for us to kind of keep track of votes that way. Um, if you do wish to register a no vote or co-sponsor a resolution, you can continue to do those in the Conference of Mayors mobile app. Um, but the rest of it, uh, just like I said, keep your uh, hands up and down for visibility. And then uh, any other technical issues, just go ahead and send me a chat and we'll uh, get you uh, settled up. Thanks. Okay. Um, so the next item for, uh, of business is the consideration of resolutions. And we have 12 before us uh, that were submitted by the deadline. They cover a wide range of areas within our jurisdiction, including racial equity, immigration, ghost guns, election accessibility, and restorative justice for you. We also have several that specifically relate to COVID-19, including its negative impact on immigrants, hate crimes in minority communities, and violent extremism in prisons and jails. Uh, new resolutions will be considered after, after the consideration of proposed resolutions. Um, and as I mentioned, I do have one specific to uh, the, working, the working group, which I will offer. Um, we're past the deadline uh, earlier today for new resolutions, um, but I ask if any other committee members um, have any new resolutions they plan to offer. 
Um, if, the, if you do and you have not done so already, please ma ma email them uh, to Laura Waxman at lwaxman at usmayors.org. Uh, remember that only members of the committee can vote on the resolutions, although any mayor present may participate in the discussion. Uh, we ask that you physically raise your hand if you want to speak, to move or second a resolution, and to vote for it. Uh, we are pleased to have our parliamentarian, Tim Wynn, uh, with us to make sure we do everything properly. Thank you, Tim. And let's proceed with resolutions. All the resolutions were posted on the conference website two weeks ago, and you were alerted to their availability at that time. Yesterday, we emailed a summary of the ones to be considered by the committee, and last week, we emailed a link to the full text. I hope each of you, each of you has had an opportunity uh, to review them, and the summary is at your, uh, uh, I think, in your inboxes. Uh, the question before us is the adoption of Resolution 5, uh, closing the racial equity gap, uh, which we share uh, with the Children, Health, and Human Services Committee. Is there any discussion? Um, hearing none, the question is now on the approval of resolution number five. Those in favor, uh, please raise your hand. And let us know, when, Laura, when you have the count. Just a second. Okay. Okay. Um, those opposed, please raise your hand. The resolution passes. Thank you, Laura. Uh, the question now before us is on the adoption of resolution 15, implementing safe protocols for prisons and jails. Um, is there any discussion from the mayors? Uh, let me just add on this one. Uh, this resolution calls for uh, the protection of people who are incarcerated by implementing clear protocols for the health and well being of those within, um, inside of um, places of detention, should COVID 19 be detected, and to respond effectively to COVID 19 outbreaks. It requires the justice system to employ safe methods of decarceration, that is, decompressing um, places of detention. Um, when the COVID is present and urges taking precautions to deny beyond the current COVID crisis uh, in case of a second wave of COVID-19 and other illnesses. The question before the committee is um, the adoption of resolution 15. Um, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. <coughs> okay. Any opposed, please raise your hand. The resolution passes, none opposed. Thank you. The next question before us is on the adoption of resolution number 16, um, urging the Trump administration uh, to waive cost share requirements for COVID-19 federal aid. Um, this resolution um, goes to the issue of FEMA assistance, as you know, which requires um, in effect a copay on the part of, of cities. Is there any discussion on this resolution? Hearing none, the question um, is now on the approval of resolution number 16. Those in favor, please re uh, raise your hand. Okay. And those opposed, please raise your hand. None opposed, the resolution passes. Thank you. The next question for the committee is a question on the adoption of uh, resolution number 17, denouncing violent extremism and the rise of hate crimes against minority communities since COVID-19. Uh, uh, this resolution urges US cities and those around the world to come together and address the shared global challenge uh, that is further compounded by COVID-19. Pledges at the conference uh, work to unite communities against division, hate, and violence, placing principles such as belonging, inclusion, equality, cohesion, peace, and safety at the core of the work, among other items. 
Is there any debate on Resolution 17? All right, hearing none, the question then is on the approval of Resolution 17. All those in favor signify by raising your hand. Okay. Any opposed, please raise your hand. None opposed, it passes. Thank you, Mayors. The next question uh, before us is the adoption of resolution number 18 in support of federal COVID relief inclusive of immigrants regardless of citizenship status. Is there any discussion or debate on this resolution? All right, hearing none, the question is now on the approval of Resolution 18. Those in favor, please signify by raising uh, your hand. Okay. Any opposed, please raise your hand at this time. None opposed, the resolution passes. Thank you. Uh, the question now before us is on the adoption of resolution number 19 um, in support of the Dignity for Detained Immigrants Act of 2019, that's HR 241. This um, bill urges DHS to enact humane detention standards at its facilities nationwide to improve conditions and ensure immigrants are afforded the dignity they deserve, urges Congress and the administration to restore due process for all those in detention by providing the federal resources necessary uh, to facilitate swift judicial review of these cases, among other items. <clears throat> the question before the committee, I'm sorry, is there any uh, discussion or debate on resolution number 19? Hearing none, the question is now on the approval of resolution 19. All those in favor of resolution 19, please signify by raising your hand. Okay. Any opposed, please raise your hand at this time. None opposed, the resolution passes. Thank you. Next resolution is number 20. Um, stand for our immigrant and refugee communities. Um, let me summarize this, bear with me. This calls upon the Senate to pass HR 6 to ensure that Dreamers and DACA and TPS recipients continue to live, live in, contribute to, and ensure the prosperity of the cities they call home, among other uh, requirements. Is there any discussion or debate on resolution number 20? All right, hearing none, the question on now is on the approval of resolution number 20. All those in favor of this resolution, please signify by raising your hand. Okay. All, all those opposed, please signify at this time by raising your hand. The res oh. Okay, uh, one opposed, the resolution passes. I believe that Mayor Taylor's. It looked like his internet connection froze for a second. Oh, okay. I, I voted to approve, not to. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Okay, none oh. opposed. Still passed. You were either incredibly um, good at being still, or your screen was frozen. <laughs> So thank you, Mayor. All right, the next question before us is on the adoption of resolution number 21 in support of safe and accessible elections. Um, this resolution in sum supports national efforts to increase voter participation and safeguard the integrity of our electoral system and urges election administrators and partners in federal, state and county governments to provide safe voting options. Is there any question or debate on um, Resolution number 21. 
All right, hearing none, the question for the committee is on the approval of resolution number 21. All those in favor signify now by raising your hand. Okay. All those opposed signify by raising your hand now. None opposed, the resolution passes. All right, the next question before us is on the adoption of resolution number 22 in support of voting by mail. Um, resolution number 22 strongly encourages the federal government and states and localities to expand opportunities to vote by mail in advance of the November 3rd, 2020 national election and thereafter. Is there any other question or debate on resolution number 22? Hearing none, the question is now on the approval of resolution number 22. All those in favor, please signify now by raising your hand. Okay. Any opposed, please signify now by raising your hand. I think Mayor Taylor is frozen again, but uh, uh, the resolution passes. All right, thank you. The next question uh, before us is on the adoption of resolution number 23 in support of banning the manufacture sale possession of all 3D printed so-called ghost guns and parts. This resolution um, urges enactment of critical federal public safety legislation to make it unlawful for any person to manufacture, transfer, sell, trade, give, transport, or deliver any unfinished firearm frame or receiver to any person other than a licensed importer, licensed manufacturer, licensed dealer, or licensed collector, um, among other um, items. Is there any discussion or debate on resolution number 23 regarding ghost guns? Hearing none, the question before the committee is now on the approval of resolution number 23. All those in favor of resolution 23 signify now by raising your hand. Okay. All those opposed, please now signify by raising your hand. Okay, the resolution passes. All right, the next question before us is on the adoption of resolution number 24 in support of restorative justice for youth, which we share with the Children, Health and Human Services Committee. Is there any discussion on, on this resolution, which encourages policymakers working on juvenile justice issues to prioritize rehabilitation over the punishment of youth offenders, pledges that the nation's mayor support the widespread adoption of restorative justice as a guiding um, philosophy uh, for courtrooms and local governments and encourages further reforms at the local, state, and federal levels align with restorative justice practices. Any question or debate on this resolution? All right, hearing none, the resolution of uh, the question now before the committee is on the approval of resolution number 24. All those in favor, please signify now by raising your hand. Okay. Uh, any opposed, please signify now by raising your hand. None opposed, the resolution passes. All right. The next question before us is the adoption of resolution number 25. Uh, the United States Conference of Mayors supports the use of non-governmental entities as an option for employment background checks. Um, is there any a question or debate on resolution number 25. Madam Chair, if I, if I may, um, Steve yes, Benjamin, as a, as, a, as a proposer of this amendment, I, I don't think there's much debate around, about it. it. It's as passed unanimously also by the African American Mayors Association. It's recognizing the economy of words. I did want to take a moment just to say thank you to you and our amazing peers and these incredible chiefs 
Uh, I wouldn't. I would not rather be in solidarity with anyone else as we seek to reinvent our communities and reimagine the way we keep them safer. So, thank you. Proud of my chief uh, Skip Holbrook as well. Um, but I, I'm here in support of, uh, of, of our resolution. If anyone has questions, thank you, Mayor Benjamin. Anyone else who wishes to be heard on uh, resolution number uh, 25? Um, hearing none, the question before the committee is on the approval of resolution number 25. All those in favor signify by raising your hand at this time. Okay. All those opposed, please signify by raising your hand at this time. The resolution passes. All right, that completes our consideration of the resolutions submitted by the deadline. Uh, the next item of business is the consideration of a new resolution in support of the principles to achieve police reform and racial justice, uh, which calls for the adoption of the principles established by our working group on police reform and racial justice. According to the rules, a two thirds vote without debate is required to allow a new re resolution to be considered. Uh, do I see a motion uh, for consideration of this um, resolution regarding the working group on police reform and racial justice. I'll, I'll move it. Um, is there a second? Second, Mayor Kathy. All those in favor of allowing this new resolution to be considered, um, please raise your hand at this time. Okay. Um, any opposed um, to having the committee consider this new uh, resolution at this, at this time? None opposed. All right. At this time, is there any question or debate um, on uh, the resolution in support of the uh, working group uh, principles? Hearing none, the question before the committee is on the approval of the new resolution in support of principles to achieve police reform and racial justice. All those in favor of this resolution, please signify uh, by raising your hand at this time. Okay. Um, all those opposed, please signify by raising your hand at this time. None are opposed. It passes. Thank you, committee members. Um, uh, may I ask Laura, are there any other new resolutions uh, for the consideration of the committee? Let me check my email just in case. Um, no, I don't think so. All right, this then concludes uh, the consideration of all the resolutions before this committee. Um, is there any new business that anyone would like to bring up at this time? All right, hearing none, um, I'd like to thank you all for your participation and contributions to this meeting. Uh, thank you for uh, having my maiden voyage as chair um, go smoothly. And Great again, job, thanks man. and gratitude uh, to all of you, uh, particularly members of uh, the working group. Uh, our work will continue and we'll be back in front of uh, this uh, body uh, with more um, detailed uh, recommendations. Thanks again to the staff. Thanks again to uh, Jerry Gorelick and her colleagues at Wilmer Hale, Chuck Ramsey, uh, Ron Davis, and all the others who uh, made this opportunity um, really meaningful and worthwhile. I'm excited um, about the work of the working group. I'm excited about the work of the committee um, and congratulations um, to everyone. Thank you all and stay strong, Mayors. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.